hidden even from you. The jarring complexity of adulthood is that we often stumble upon our hidden self, the parts that we don't like, the parts we wish would go away when we bump up against those roles that we don't think we're in the middle of. One of the reasons we find it so difficult to visit parents as adults is that we see ourselves in new ways that we don't like. Discovering our hidden selves is hard. Now, I'm going to tell you another story. It is in Vermont. It is 1986, maybe 87. My folks have moved to Vermont a long time ago, and there's a beautiful lake there called Lake Champlain. It's not a great lake, but it's a great lake. And there's a beach. And my sister-in-law says to my wife, hey, let's go down to the beach. She had two kids, we had one. It was a beautiful summer day. The kind that only Vermont and places like Michigan can have when it's sunny and warm but not hot and thick and the sky has a blue that you can just touch and it reflects in the lake. And so we all put on our bathing suits and drove down to the beach. And my wife says to me, honey, Aaron wants to go out there, but it's a little bit dangerous. Would you go out there with him? And so we did. He and his trunks, being most of three, but not quite the kind of trunks that hang down below your knee, you know, the ones that go on round children. And I had on the shorts that come up a little above the knee, and we were standing there in the water, and he was holding my hand, and at just that moment, at just that moment, I couldn't tell which one I was. I could feel his hand in mine, but I could also feel my hand reaching up into his. That I could feel my own loins shivering in the breeze and feel the water going about his hips. We became interchangeable at that moment. I was the parent and I was the child. The woman on the shore was my wife and she was my mother. And there was the baby, not mine, but someone else's. And suddenly time collapsed and telescoped together and I couldn't tell who I was. And I got to tell you, that's one of the richest moments in my life. When I was quite young, not as young as two and a half, my grandfather was quite old, and my father, being an only child, was called upon to take him to the nursing home, actually from nursing home to nursing home, because my grandfather was a frugal man, which meant that whenever he could find a nursing home that was cheaper, it was time to move him. And one of the last ones we visited, he took me along, Perhaps I was 12. We go to the nursing home, and nursing homes in 1965 were a little less splendid than they are now. Had that smell of death. To a 12-year-old, it was forbidding. And then we go to see my grandfather, who was 80 when I was born, so he was already 92, mind you. And there was my grandfather, very much captured by the bed, but earnest in leaving. And there's my father trying to help him up. And I realized at that moment that here was my father being a son and not knowing how. And if he doesn't know how to be a son, where are the blazes? Does he come up being a father in the first place? It was a disturbing moment for a 12-year-old to see a very old man cruising very close to death. He would be dead within months. And my father, unable to understand how to handle him, and the crotchety old man and the, and the, and the desiring son and the miscommunications. And I was watching all this, and I felt a terrible, terrible feeling inside of me. And then in 1981, my father had cancer. And so I went to be with my mother along with my other siblings, and there he was in the hospital bed, weak and withered, asking for help, and I did not know how to give it to him. He recovered, but again, there I was in that place where I could not tell who I was in the room. There was my father lying in the bed, and here I was standing next to it, but was I not also 
standing next to him. Do you see what I'm talking about? The spirituality of adulthood is fraught with these places where being a child and an adult and a parent and a son all collapse together in ways that we cannot predict and suddenly our hidden selves come come through it like leaking through the sieve of life and suddenly we feel feelings we did not even know we had the capacity to do. In 1999, it was Mother's Day weekend. We were visiting my mother-in-law in Maryland. And the phone rings before cell phone days, I think. It was my brother. That was the day my father died. I did not expect it. He'd been ill for 19 years, obviously, off and on. And of course, when you hear of the death of a parent, you weep. And there was my little boy, five years old, seeing his father crying. And so, of course, he cried too. This is what life does to us, friends. It takes away all the pretenses of knowing who we are. I was a father undone by his own father. My son was undone by his father. The veils of pretense, the comforts of what we know vanish. In adulthood, our our failures come back to haunt us. When our children and our parents point them out, as they always do, we, we can face the shadowed and complex world we thought was sunny and simple in youth if we have some new kind of courage, not the kind that scales mountains or takes on tasks. One that is willing to give up what we think we are, what we thought we should be, what we thought others wanted us to be, to become who we really are. As I've said many times, quoting a late great colleague, life is just a chance to grow a soul. A chance. Becoming a person, a real person, is not guaranteed. We can hide behind the masks of parent and child and sibling and friend and mate. We can dodge all the difficulty. We can evade all the responsibilities for finding ourselves. We don't necessarily become real. Because, as the blues remind us, becoming real is a struggle. It involves sorrow. It courts doubt. It is the prodigal's life. To realize after we've spent all of our wealth in the riotous living of fame and fortune, ambition and hope, that we are at the end of the day struggling to stay alive. Isn't it ironic? Isn't that odd? Yes. We must sometimes truly lose our lives. What we think is our lives. If we truly wish to find life. I pray that we each find that courage. May these words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found true in thy sight, thou who art my rock and my redeemer. Amen.